Welcome back to Kushtika Garage, everyone. I have a bit of a controversial install for you today. Controversial for some of you, at least. So what do we got here? A little something something from XDP. I actually picked it up from Amazon, but they XDP sells these on Amazon. I got... a cat fuel filter for my primary fuel filter housing. Now I know what some of you are saying. Some of you are like, sweet, cool. Well, let me know how it goes. Show me how to install it. Others are like, boo. And that's the controversial side. So I'm gonna tell you why I did it or why I'm going to do this. And then I'm gonna talk about the controversy. And then I'm gonna show you how to install it. So why am I hooking up this adapter to my fuel filter housing and running a cat filter instead of standard stock filters, OEM filters. Well, I already run cat filters on my titanium fast lift pump. I already run this filter and a dedicated water separator. So it makes sense for me to just go uniform, get all the same filters, because I can get a two pack for pretty cheap on Amazon with free shipping. Uh, of these guys and I can order them in bulk and just keep them on the shelf and change out my fuel filters every year like I do So that's one reason why I do it too. I really like the cat brand. You got a cat hat here uh, They make great filters. I've been running these on my fast lift pump now for three or four years. I haven't had any issues uh, I really really like the quality of them and if you look on the internet, you're going to find a lot of conflicting information, a lot of misinformation, and a lot of opinions in place of information uh, about these filters and the micron rating. So what is the micron rating of these? The general consensus seems to be uh, across the sites, the various businesses that sell them, that this is a 2 micron at 98% efficiency and a 3 micron at 99% efficiency. So it's a pretty good micron rating. You know, you want around 3 to 4 microns. Uh, rating at least for your LB7 Duramax engine, especially for your LB7s. These do fit um, other Duramaxes as well, LOIs, LBCs, LMMs. I forgot the other ones. Uh, I have an LB7 though, so that's what we do here. It's LB7 stuff. Uh, but where was I going with that? Forgot what I was just talking about. So it has, you know, a decent micron rating and that's what you want we want to keep our injectors healthy and clean and since i just put in some 45 over sack nozzle injectors last year i'm not in a hurry to mess them up and redo them so i want a quality filter the oems were great especially since i'm already running uh one of these in my fast lift pump and a dedicated water separator that separate or that has a micron rating of 10 microns i think it's what the water separator is micro uh, rated at so it all makes sense for me to do this plus i was a little bit curious uh, about this product, about this adapter, and how it works and everything, and I know some of you are as well. And since I have a YouTube channel, I gotta try these things out. I can justify it because, you know, I have a YouTube channel. This is what we do. So, what is the controversy behind these? The controversy is that some people think they have like a 10 micron rating or a 17 micron rating or something ridiculous. And so they're like, just get an OEM, just get a Baldwin, just get a AC Delco, just get a Napa brand and be done with it. That's fine. You can do that if you want to. 100% okay. But it's not a 10 or a 17 micron. As I just stated, uh, the general consensus is 2 micron rating at 98% efficiency and a 3 micron at 99% efficiency. These are relatively cheap compared to uh say a napa brand these napa brand i think i bought it in prince of wales for like 70 bucks you get these for like 20 bucks so they are a lot cheaper and they are high quality and i'll put them side by side the cat filter is a little bit bigger the napa filters kind of widens up at the top but the cat filter is a little bit longer it does have a lot of uh, filament in there, a lot of material in there for filtering. Uh, some of the cons against it or the controversy is it doesn't have a water separator or a drain for the water separator. However, it still does separate water uh, because oil is lighter than water. So the oil, i.e. your diesel, is still going to float to the top and the water will still be at the bottom. Uh, why is that not an issue for me? 
Well, I have a fast lift pump for one with a dedicated water separator, and I have another one of these filters in line, so it doesn't really matter, but I will tell you, uh, I will confess, I've never actually used the water separator on any of my filters. I change my filters every year, regardless, just because I like to take them open, or cut them open, see what's inside, make sure that the health of my engine and fuel system is good, and my overall system's not, you know, eating itself. And I have pretty good fuel here up in Alaska, so water and the fuel is not really an issue for me. And, you know, like I said, because I change these filters out every year regardless, uh, oil and everything as well, you know, I it doesn't really affect me too much. I don't, don't need to worry about it. Uh, as you know, I do a lot of overlanding, spend a lot of time out in the mountains, and I'll be out for a couple of months at a time, so I always change these before I go. Uh, just because, you know, I want my engine to be healthy. I don't want my engine to be eating itself uh, apart while I'm out enjoying it, and I don't want to get stuck somewhere down the line. So I just always change my oil and my fuel filters uh, every year, regardless of how many miles I put on it, just so I can check the health, just so I can reset, just so I can have some clean filters and everything in there. So I'm not really worried about that. So another controversy is that uh, and this might be an old one too, just like on the old forums and everything, but they say that the cats are made by Baldwin. Uh, so just get a Baldwin and be done with it, is uh, the quotes. Well, they're not made by Baldwin anymore. They're like, oh yeah, that's because Baldwin and Qua Cat have a joint operation, a subsidiary between the two that make these filters. That was true, but it's also not true anymore as, uh, as well. Cat makes the cat filters. So you can only get a cat filter from Cat. Uh, so that was the other controversy, and I'm not sure if there's any other controversies beyond that. I'm not too sure. But, you know, there's a lot of people who love them. There's a lot of people who hate them uh, based off of things they've read on the internet. I don't think the people who hate them have really ran them and had any issues with them. I haven't found anyone anywhere who's had any issues with the cat filters. They're, they're pretty good. So I'm not a naysayer here. I enjoy them. I'm going to run them. I got this adapter, so let's go over how to install it now. Show you what's in the kit. Okay, so you got the filter. That came in the kit. Got the adapter housing. That came in the kit. We got a bag of goodies here. XDP sticker. We got some O-rings. So this big O-ring is going to go on the adapter. This, there's two smaller O-rings in here. You got a fatty and a skinny one. The fatty one is going to go right here. And then the skinnier one is going to go on the uh, filter housing itself that will sit right into there. And because the adapter is kind of big, comes with uh, this little... Uh, extender here so it'll push the adapter and the whole housing away so it'll clear this adapter and last but not least it has a new bleeder screw and uh, complete with a o-ring uh, mine uh, i just put on a brand new uh, fuel filter housing that's another thing this is the old one i actually ran my truck just off of uh, the fast lift pump and two cat filters for about two years now. Burp. And I just recently bought a brand new uh, fuel filter housing and put that on. Specifically uh, for two reasons. Mainly because I wanted a nice uh, brand new fuel heater. Because uh, it's a diesel engine. It's diesel. Diesel needs heat to combust. And how diesel engines get that heat is through initially during cold starts and cold weather uh, they get it through heating the fuel so i have a fuel heater here as well as i have a fuel heater that i put in the fast lift pump it so definitely helps with cold weather starts i live in alaska so we get you know, more cold weather than we don't i don't think this is applicable to everyone everywhere but if you live in colder climates definitely applicable so that's one way you get heat another way you get heat is through your glow plugs on cold start That'll heat up your pistons so that when you're squirting fuel on there, it, your pistons will be nice and hot. And then another way you get heat is through uh, the compression. That 17 to 1, 18 to 1 compression will create a lot of heat, which will create that combustion. And then lastly, uh, intake heater 
uh, plug in an LB7 and a intake heater grid, I believe, in LLY on up. And I removed that plug uh, for more flow. Um, and it did make a difference, by the way. And I also just uh, uh, recorded a video on how to permanently get rid of that P0543 code that pops when you do get rid of that. So you want to check that video out as well. Should have been dropped by now. Uh, should have been published by now. So you need all of those things for combustion. You need heat through your fuel heaters, through your glow plugs, through your compression, and then if you have it through your intake heater plug, and that will create a nice hot uh, situation so that your fuel will fully combust, not just shoot out your tailpipe. So that's why I added back on my housing. Most people, once they have a lift pump, they don't they don't need the heater, so they delete it because these things are known for leaking, notorious for leaking. Everybody hates them. I'm not a huge fan of them myself just because it seems like a shitty design, especially if you have a heater in there that works, uh, which this one doesn't. But if you have a heater that works, it just cooks those O-rings and things melt. It's under a lot of pressure and things melt. So your O-rings will fail on you. So most people just delete them and you know they're done with it after they have a lift pump. But I need that extra heat and it did make a difference in my fuel economy overall. I'll talk about more, talk about that more in another video. So let's go ahead and get to installing this thing. All right, there's our fuel filter housing. So what we have to do is, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the heater portion here so that it doesn't get snagged up on anything because we are going to unbolt this right here the two 12 millimeters it also comes with replacement bolts for this too but i don't think we actually need those so um yeah so we'll go ahead and get in on that So to remove that, you have to lift this little clip portion up, and it slides right out. So next, I think I am going to remove the actual filter while it's all bolted on. That's just going to be a lot easier, I think. A couple of ways you can do this. You can remove your uh, fender well uh, mud liner there. Reach it from the bottom is probably the easiest. I'm going to see if I can get away with not doing that. Uh, I don't have a filter wrench, but I do have a belt, so... Okay, now that that's removed, we can go ahead and remove those two bolts. They are 12 millimeter. Okay, so O-ring D, which is going to be the thin O-ring out of the two small O-rings, goes inside the adapter. Just like so. Let's see how far that actually goes down. I don't think it goes down all the way. Yeah, it just kind of sits in there like that. Bigger O-ring goes right here. We're gonna wanna lube this O-ring up before we put it on. I 
and then this fatty goes right here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of fuel for that. A little bit of fuel, work that one on. So all three O-rings are in place. Ready for the adapter portion here, we got a couple of bolts and this little spacer. Get the bolt started. Turn the adapter in. That's not a that's not a 12 anymore. That's a 13. Beautiful. Okay, we're ready to assemble our adapter here. I put a little bit of grease there a little bit of grease there you can use engine oil you can use some diesel fuel works fine but i happen to have uh some grease and a grease gun sitting around so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna attach this here Hand tight, we'll get it, get the final cinch in here in a minute. Now we're gonna put this on. This is gonna give me a nice final cinch in. You don't need to over tighten it. Tighten the adapter. Now to double check it, I'm gonna turn on my fuel pump. Hope that I just break that off. Son of a bitch. Well, turn my fuel pump on. That's hard. No fuel is leaking. So it is installed. So I'll say at this point, if you don't have a lift pump, this is where you would bleed and you would prime and you get all the air out and everything, but I have that lift pump, so it filled up. It's tight. It's not leaking any fuel. So that's good to go. Truck is on. Got that fixed. Nothing is leaking. All right, we're good to go here. Installation complete. Right, guys just came back from ripping around with pig 
for a few miles on the back loop here just to see if I could uh, make those O-rings leak or see if I can pop the housing off, see if I could damage something. I did some wide open throttle pulls and everything just to test on it and nothing is leaking. It held together well. Uh, I don't, don't know if I noticed any performance increase or anything. I don't think you're supposed to. It's just a filter housing. Might flow better, might flow worse. I don't know. Um, I didn't really notice a change. Some people report better fuel mileage. So I guess we'll see. I'll keep an eye on that for you and let you know uh, later. And um, yeah, I'd say that was a pretty easy install. Very easy install. Didn't need any special tools just to use a 12 millimeter uh, wrench to take the housing off. The new bolts were a 13 millimeter to put them back on. And uh, that was it. Put your O-rings on, grease them up, tighten everything back together. And it was it was simple super simple guys uh, I have links down in the description for all of these parts everything that you need um, or for the whole kit from XDP it was only like a hundred bucks or something like that uh, when I bought it and I, I bought it you know maybe a couple months ago now it's just been sitting in the garage waiting for me to film it that's the thing filming takes longer and you have to think about it and you have to be in the right state of mind you can't just do it all tired or whatever otherwise I'd probably get a lot more done with the truck if I didn't have to talk to you and think about it think about the the film but that's it guys i'm gonna um take this thing out overland for a couple of months here in about two three weeks and by the time that you see this i will probably be on that trip uh already and towards the end of it so i'll have a good you know couple of months of use so if you're interested in this xdp adapter and running a cat filter how it performs what the fuel mileage is uh did it leak? Did it pop off? Did it damage anything? You know, let me know down in the uh, the comments. You know, if you have any questions or anything. Uh, I don't suspect there'll be any issues, but you never know. So uh, might as well let me test it out first for you, right? And then decide for yourself if you want to. But I think that's gonna do it for now. Uh, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed doing that. That was easy. And now I got matching filters all the way around and. The next time I change my fuel filters, I can just order, you know, the same filter, get a two pack and toss it on there and be easy peasy. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing, checking out all the other videos. If you are into fuel mods and fuel heaters and trying to maximize your fuel efficiency and your cold startups and making your truck run better and uh, even top half engine rebuilds, port and polishing, turbo rebuilds upgrading your exhaust, port and polishing your exhaust, uh, all of it, tuners, uh, brake systems, ABS systems, wheel seals, bearings, all that good stuff. Welcome to Kushtaka Garage. Got everything you need. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later.